Anapod, the perfect solution to hypothermia in the OR surgical suite. Inadvertent hypothermia causes problems intraoperatively and postoperatively in the surgical patient and affects up to 60% of all surgical patients. Studies have shown that the maintenance of a normal core temperature decreases the incidence of wound infection, may reduce blood loss, improves oxygen consumption, shortens the hospital stay, and helps decrease the incidence of fatal cardiac events. The central nervous system depression caused by hypothermia slows metabolism of medications, which in turn slows the emergence from anesthesia. The Anapod humidification system and associated breathing circuit is a WIC-type anesthesia heated gas humidifier system intended for use in a hospital operating room setting to help maintain normothermia during surgical operations without complex, bulky, and more expensive methods. When passive warming methods are not sufficient and active methods such as warming blankets and forced air warmers are expensive and impractical for certain procedures, the Anapod WIC-type anesthesia humidification system of heating and humidifying anesthetic gases to maintain normothermia preoperatively and intraoperatively may be a better, more effective, and cost-efficient method for your surgical patients. Anapod Hardware and Equipment the Anapod humidification system consists of the Anapod controller, heated wick circuit, power and controller cable, and pole mount bracket. The controller is attached to an IV pole with a pole mount bracket. How the heated wick system works. All heating takes place inside the inspiratory limb. The small volume of water held in the circuit guarantees rapid heating and cooling. There is no need to balance temperatures to maintain proper humidity. The heated wick breathing system is uniquely designed to overcome the problems associated with common heated humidification systems, which include continuous minimum flow, rainout, special inventory requirements such as water chambers, and other devices that require lengthy setup and warm up. Setting up the Anapod heated wick circuit. Ensure the Anapod humidification system is set up correctly per the individual circuit product to be used. Specific instructions for use of the breathing circuits are provided in the individual packaging. Setting up the circuit. Add water to the circuit limb from the enclosed sterile water container. Remove screw cap and sterile cover from water bottle. Hold the end of the tube at a 45 degree angle. Pour slowly approximately 75 milliliters of water into the opening that connects to the anesthesia machine. Lower the patient end of the tube to saturate the wick of the patient end first. Then, lower the machine end of the tube to complete the absorption of the water into the wick material. Gently shake the circuit to distribute the water evenly onto the entire length of the wick. There should be no movement of water within the circuit. The water that was introduced into the circuit should be sufficient to provide up to six hours of operation in a 48-inch circuit and up to four hours in a 72-inch circuit. Adding more water to the circuit. If the case runs longer or condensation is no longer visible within the inspiratory tubing, add more water. Add approximately 12 cc of water for each additional hour of humidity. Do not add too much water. If you overfill the circuit, simply drain excess water out at the end of the tube. Connect the Anapod cable assembly to the front of the controller. The opposite end of the cable assembly has a white six-pin plastic connector that connects to the six-pin plastic connector on the heated wick circuit. These two connectors lock together with a snap when properly connected and are keyed to prevent improper connection. Turn the on-off control switch on the rear of the Anapod humidification system to the on position. Set the temperature control to the desired temperature between 34 and 45 degrees centigrade. Set the gas flow to desired settings. Ensure the desired temperature setting in the heated wick circuit is reached before connecting the circuit to the patient airway. Confirm visually on the front panel display. 
Note, the heated wick circuit will remain at a constant temperature regardless of flow. If you preheat the system, condensation will form along the inside of the tubing. This condensation is a gauge or indication of the need to add water to maintain humidification. As the water in the wick circuit is depleted, the condensation will slowly dissipate beginning at the machine end of the circuit. When the last 8 to 10 inches of the breathing circuit shows condensation, additional water should be added. To stop treatment, turn the on-off control switch on the rear of the antipod to the off position. Disconnect the circuit from the cable assembly by depressing the latch on the white connector and separating the connectors. Dispose of the used circuit. All disposable products should be treated as biohazard waste. Note, the cable assembly is designed to be reused. Do not dispose with the breathing circuit. Operating the antipod control unit. Temperature display illustrates breathing circuit temperature numerically. Audible alarm. An alarm will activate when patient breathing circuit temperature exceeds 47.5 degrees centigrade. A defective or damaged sensor is detected in the wick circuit. The cable assembly is damaged or disconnected from the controller. Controls. On-off switch. Turns the power on and off for both the antipod humidification system and heated wick circuit. Temperature control knob sets the desired temperature. Alarm silence button silences the audible alarm for two minutes. Alarms. All alarms generate both a visual indication and an audible alarm. The audible alarm can be silenced for two minutes by pressing the alarm silence button. However, the alarm LED will remain illuminated as long as the alarm condition exists. All alarms will disable the heater in the wick circuit. Probe sensor alarm indicates the heated wick circuit has malfunctioned or is not connected. Over temperature alarm indicates the wick circuit internal temperature probe has detected temperatures at or above 47.5 degrees centigrade. Temperature measurement. The antipod uses one temperature sensor which is located inside each heated wick circuit. There are no external probes to attach. This probe is calibrated to measure the temperature of the flowing gas at the patient end of the wick circuit. As with all heated systems, there is a certain drop in temperature in unheated Ys, elbows, and ET tubes. You can expect a temperature drop of approximately 4 to 5 degrees centigrade from the wick circuit outlet to the inlet of the ET tube under normal operating room conditions. It may be necessary to overcome heat loss in the last few inches of the tubing, cuff, patient Y, elbow, and or ET tube. You may also need to compensate for very cold room temperatures and or low air flows. Testing shows the following typical temperature drops between wick circuit output and ET tube. Displayed, 37 degrees centigrade. Delivered at ET tube, 34 degrees centigrade. Displayed, 41 degrees centigrade. Delivered at ET tube, 37 degrees centigrade. Displayed, 45 degrees centigrade. Delivered at ET tube, 40 degrees centigrade. <laughs>